Let's look at this very, very special banjo. It's a bald one. Not a bald one, no, but a bald one banjo. It, um, these uh, were manufactured in late 60s, early 70s. Let's hear what it sounds like. <laughs> Okay, so in my entire life of looking at, at thousands of banjos, I have seen four of these. This is the fifth one. One of them, somebody taking the tone ring out and put a raised head tone ring out, so I couldn't see what it sounded like. The other one is owned by a friend of mine who has a broken neck. The third one uh, was in such bad condition I couldn't believe it. The finish was off of it. And the fourth one was uh, bought by or given to someone when he first started playing banjo as a kid, and he still has it, and it is in absolute brand new condition, okay? So, and what I'm saying, to find one of these in good shape is virtually impossible, okay? And this one's in really, really good shape, okay? Um, huh, okay, so let's look at the banjo, and you'll see that it has an engraved uh, ode tailpiece. And, and we'll, we'll talk about how this came about. And then we have the engraved uh, armrest. Okay, and then we look at it. And look at the shape of the gold. Now we do clean banjos up, we're really good at it, and this one cleaned up really, really nice. All right, now let me, uh, let's look up the neck. Okay. And let's look at the headstock. Now, notice this says Baldwin on it, okay? You may see, um, and the brief history is that Ode was developed by a guy who sold it to Baldwin. Baldwin, uh, his name wasn't really that good back then, even though uh, Bobby Joe Thompson, who played on Hee Haw, played one of these. And at the time, this was right about the time of deliverance, there were no good banjos being made in the United States, none, okay? Gibson hit its low, so these were the premium instruments and people started buying them, but they were still really scarce. Okay, then Baldwin decided to put Ode on them, so it became Baldwin Ode, and all that does is just means it's older. Then, Baldwin sold to Gretsch. So the ones that you see most of just say Ode on the headstock, okay? And they don't sound anything like this. I've, this is one of the best sounding banjos I've ever played. And I'm comparing these with original Flathead Granadas, uh, original Fours, original 75s. This banjo sounds unreal, very rare. Now we'll, uh, we'll look at the resonator. <laughs> And you'll see the resonator looks really nice. Uh, the neck has not much wear at all on it. I'm not going to say it's perfect, but it's, it's pretty darn nice. Pretty unbelievably nice, actually. And uh, now one thing you'll know on a lot of these old banjos is that the binding will 
uh, yellow a little bit, which is cool. It makes it look older. Okay. And sometimes you'll have these little cracks in the binding, which don't mean anything except what it means is that it's old. So it, it's kind of like a patina. It's something you don't want to mess with. You would not want to uh, do anything to this. You want it to look exactly the way it is, okay? And then the other thing we did is there was right in this area, there was a little patch of binding that was missing. So we took it to our friend down at Earth Shaking Music and he put a few pieces of binding and did a pretty good job, but if you look at it, you can see the pieces, okay? But it looks a whole lot better, and it really kind of goes along with the rest of the banjo. So um, I would say, as I say, I've, I've never, I've only seen one banjo that was better than this, and it was owned by somebody who will never sell it, okay? Because most of these were played. So this, you could almost say this is probably the best Baldwin Ode style D banjo that you're ever going to run into. Okay? Anyway, that's it. If you have any questions about it, you can call Andy at 404 372 5482. And people that have been around a lot are the ones that know what this really is. You can also go to banjowarehouse.com, see pictures of it. And if you want to come visit us, just give us a call the day before because we may be looking for banjos. We may be out. But we can see at night, we can see on the weekends, because we're only a mile and a half away. All right, well, that sounds great. We hope you have a great Christmas, and uh, hit your sub subscribe button, and uh, you'll be able to look at hundreds of banjos. Uh, and uh, the only other thing I'll say is if you come here, we have about 130 banjos, and when you leave, you'll know exactly what each type banjo sounds like, and you'll know the sound that you like. So have a great day and we'll talk to you later.